I'm Ashlyn. And I'm Zach. And we're traveling A to Z. This week, we're in Egypt. So we just arrived to the Valley of the Kings. So I paid to go into the extra little tomb. It's a special tomb. You have to have a special ticket. In the Valley of the Kings, we're visiting three tombs plus an extra tomb, which we had a ticket for, to see Tutankhamun's mummy. We're heading to our first tomb at the Valley of the Kings. There are 62 uh, king's tombs here, and they were discovered, the last one in 1922. So they picked this location because it has, the mount has a natural shape of a pyramid. In the New Kingdom, they moved their tombs from pyramid shape to tombs because they kept getting raided and they thought this would be a way that they wouldn't get raided anymore. In the New Kingdom, they decided to make the tombs in the mountain. This hid the tombs and made them less noticeable. They even had some booby traps. Here, you could see the mountain and some of the tombs that are underground that they have found. Our first tomb we're visiting is to King Merneptah's tomb. He is son of Ramsey II. He was the 13th son of Ramesses II, coming into power only because his brothers had died. He came into power in his 60s or 70s, and he lived well into his 90s and was one of the oldest pharaohs in Egyptian history, if not the oldest. His tomb has a lot of corridors that lead to a burial chamber at the end. The last room is the most important room of the tomb. It also has four different rooms off of this tomb that store different goods. The grave robbers, so when they came in, they would catch them, they'd cut off their heads, and then they would get a spot on the wall with their name and their head. There's a lot of headless people. A lot of people trying to rob it. This right here is the lid of the sarcophagus. The rest of the sarcophagus is in the middle of the room. Inside the lid, they also put decorations, which you could see if you go underneath the sarcophagus and look up at the lid. So that is the lid of the sarcophagus. And over here is actually where the body went in. It's a square box. You can see the big hole. It's huge. We're hiking out. It's definitely uh, not too bad. Not as bad as the Great Pyramid because you get to stand up the whole way. It's a lot cooler. This is really pretty though. So we are currently in King Ramsey the Nine's tomb. It's pretty, it's a lot shorter than the last tomb we were just in. Um, but it's still very beautiful and it has a lot of colors. Ramesses the Ninth was the eighth sparrow of the 20th dynasty of Egypt. He was the third longest serving king of the dynasty after Ramesses the Third and Ramesses the Eleventh. Ramesses IX is best known for his tomb robbery trials. During the trials, it became clear that several royal and noble tombs in the western necropolis were robbed. He therefore had the robbers beheaded. Ramesses IX's tomb is in the center part of the Valley of the Kings and it runs 105 meters into the hillside. At the far end of the chamber, there is a burial chamber where the sarcophagus was placed in a rectangular section carved out to accommodate it. So we're currently going into Ramsey's the third tomb. Ramses III tomb was originally being built for another king, but was abandoned when it unintentionally broke into an earlier tomb of a king. It was then later restarted and extended on a different axis from Ramsey III. Ramses III tomb 
The last tomb we visited in the Valley of the Kings was to King Tutankhamun. It does require a separate entrance ticket, which is additional to the Valley of the Kings. It's a fairly modest burial chamber compared to all the other royal tombs found in the Valley of the Kings. So Tutankhamun's sarcophagus, he died at the age of 19. And he's right, right there, straight ahead. <laughs> and on the corners of his sarcophagus is Isis. Tutankhamun's mummy. We learned Tutankhamun is the only tomb that wasn't raided because the Ramsey the fifth and sixth, when they built it from the like 20th dynasty, accidentally buried it and they didn't know it was there until they started digging it up. So that's the only original one here. When Tutankhamun's tomb was found, all the treasures and his mask were still intact. When they cut the mask off, unfortunately cut the mummy and made it too unstable to move. So you could still see the original mummy of Tutankhamun in the Valley of the Kings. Our next stop is to an alabaster stone factory. First they take the alabaster rock, they then cover it with cloth and glue and leave it in the soil and sun for two days to let it dry. They then make a hole in the middle of the vase with a hand drill. The next person then uses sandpaper to polish the rock. The vase is then put in an Egyptian oven at around 250 degrees for 10 minutes. It takes approximately one week to finish this vase from hand. There's also a guy that carves pitchers into stone and somebody else carving cats out of green alabaster stone. After we were shown how the artwork was made, we went into the alabaster store and looked around at the artwork. There's many different colors of alabaster and different things to buy, such as plates, vases, statues, pictures, and much more. Our next stop is Habu Temple. Habu Temple is located near the hills of the west bank of the Nile, opposite the city of Luxor, Egypt. It is known as the Mortuary Temple of Ramesses III. The temple is guarded by the Lioness Sikmen, which is the ancient Egyptian goddess of war and healing. This is one of the best funeral temples in the West Bank. The temple is 490 feet long or 150 meters. The first entrance is a Syrian design. The second entrance is an Egyptian design. The first pylon leads into an open courtyard lined with colossal statues of Resmussen III and Osiris on one side and uncarved columns on the other. The second pylon leads to a hall featuring columns of Rasmussen III. At the top of the columns you can see open papyrus. This is indicating that it's an Egyptian temple. On the wall is King Ramsay III. He's a very strong king and you can see his arm up with a knife and that's to indicate he will kill his enemies. At the far end of the hall there is a ramp that leads through a third pylon which then leads to another hall. The gate is beautifully decorated and still has some of its original color. This hall unfortunately lost its roof, but you can still see the columns that surround the room. Originally, the king, um, Ramsey III, this is the sign to say, hey, this is my name. And in the past, Ramsey the second um, got rid of the name of some of it. And so what he did is he made it really deep so they can't actually change the name. And he, it's stuck. Yeah, so how deep is it? It's, it's all the way to my wrist. So it's a good 
15 centimeters. 15 centimeters, sure. Yeah. In the 1800s, all the stones were cut because they used the stone from the columns to build the dam. Around this area, there's a whole bunch of rooms. They're offering rooms, but a lot of them are destroyed because the stones were also used for the dam. So they sloped the ground so the king could be at the top and look all the way down to the entrance. We're back in Luxor on the uh, East Bank and we're going to Karnak Temple. So we're heading to Karnak Temples. It's a set of nine temples and it's in Luxor on the East Bank. Kartnik Temple Complex, commonly known as Kartnik, comprises of a vast mix of temples, gates, chapels, and other buildings near Luxor. The complex was developed over more than a thousand years ago, particularly between the 12th and 20th dynasties. At its peak, it was the largest and most important religious complex in ancient Egypt. Ramos II used the rams to decorate the temple as you walk in. The complex is an open-air museum and is believed to be the second most visited historical site in Egypt, only second to the Giza Pyramid Complex near Cairo. It consists of four main parts, but only the largest is currently open to the public. The original temple was destroyed and partially restored by Hatshepsut, although another pharaoh built around it in order to change the focus of orientation of the sacred area. Unfortunately, many portions of it have been carried away for uses in other buildings. On the entrance gate, you could see mud and bricks behind it. This is how the ancient Egyptians build the wall. They stack up the mud and bricks to make a ramp. They then use the ramp to stack the large stones to make the wall of the gate. This statue is for King Ramsay II, and there's a statue of Nefertiti on his leg. In the 22nd dynasty, the King Ba Negan removed Ramsay II's name and put his own name. The Great Hall of Amun-Re has 134 massive columns arranged in 16 rows. The columns in ancient Egyptian is a symbol for eternity, so a lot of the buildings had lots of columns. In this hall, a lot of the columns were dedicated by different kings, but Ramsay II took credit for all of them. So 134 columns, want to live forever, it means eternity. The shorter obelisk is built for King Tutmos I, who is Hatshepsut's father, and the taller obelisk is for Queen Hatshepsut. When standing next to the two obelisks, they look very similar in size. But when you go to a different angle, you realize that it is 10 meters difference. Building Hatshepsut's obelisk was an optical illusion, so it looked about the same height as the king's obelisk. This column has a scarab on it, which is a type of beetle, which means good luck. People come from all over the world to this temple for luck. So if you walk around it four times, it's good luck, five times if you want to get married, and six times if you want to have a baby. We decided to walk around it six times. Is that six total? That was six. Yes. Good job. Six Yay! and a half. We gave it a little something extra. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, that just happened. Yep, we walked around six times, so you know. I hope you enjoyed exploring some of the temples around Luxor and the Valley of the Kings. Join us for our next video as we take you to the Red Sea and give you a tour of our all-inclusive resort and take you diving and ATVing.